Hi, welcome back to Everyday Blessings. My name is Nina. I'm a homeschooling mom with five kids at home and six kids total. Here on my channel, I talk about all things homeschool, from tots to teens in real life, because God didn't make me Pinterest perfect and I don't even pretend to be. <laughs> talk about Charlotte Mason. The Charlotte Mason method. So if you're new to homeschooling or you're a seasoned homeschooler, you have probably heard of Charlotte Mason. Let me get that dog. All right. So Charlotte Mason was an educator in England at the turn of the 20th century. She came up with her own method for teaching her students. Hold on, there's another dog. Okay, if it's not one thing, it's something else, right? I finally got all of my kids settled and then my dogs are feeling super needy and clingy. So, Charlotte Mason was an educator from England at the turn of the 20th century. She developed her own way of teaching her students. And at this time, it was not normal. Her teaching methods were kind of like, okay. But the way that she approached children was different from the way that majority of society was approaching children at that time. That was a very be seen and not heard, you know, prim proper and be a miniature adult, right? Charlotte Mason saw children as people <laughs> and she really strove to educate the whole person. The whole, not just the mind, not just, you know, sit prim and proper, be seen and not heard. It was still a more strict time for sure, but she knew that they needed more. They needed, they had more in them than just learn basic etiquette and arithmetic and reading, writing, spelling. There's a whole person in there that needs to be nurtured and taken care of and taught and needs to explore and learn. And that's what she really focused on. So, there's a whole lot of nature study in the Charlotte Mason method. Get out, get out, explore, look at things so that you can ask questions about them. She really inspired these children to go out into nature and not just see grass. Okay, well, yeah, clouds. Woohoo. Look. A bunny. Yay, let's go inside now. She inspired them to like get down in the grass and really look at it like, ooh, wow. Like up close and personal. There's bugs in this grass and this grass feels different than this grass over here. And in the fall, it feels different than it does in the spring. And this is really soft and this is really bumpy and look at this tree. And like all, all of the things she wanted them to get out and experience them, not just read about them. Another huge part of this is the books that she chose to use in her educating. She specifically used what we call living books. Living books are not dry textbooks where you open the book and it's just a bunch of dry facts about science and history and geography and you know memorize these facts and regurgitate them when it's time for a test she didn't use any of these textbooks she used living books these are stories stories that the children get caught up in they connect to the characters
All right, add another child squabble into the books for today. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this is real life. So these living books, these children connect with these characters and through connecting with the characters and being engulfed in the story, they are learning math, they are learning history, geography, science through this story. So sometimes they're novels, sometimes they're picture books. We have so many options for living books now. It's, it's, I could do a whole video on it. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do a video on just different living books. And I would love to do that if you guys would love to see it. But these books were the exact opposite of dry textbooks. These books really captured the children's attention and got them involved in the story. And through that, they ended up learning the facts, which is awesome. I love living books. These lessons were kept very short. Charlotte Mason knew that children had a short attention span, right? Let's just be real here. How many times do you start something and your child's like, yes, I really want to do this. I want to play Play-Doh. And 10 minutes later, they're like, can I do something else? I'm bored. They have a very short attention span. So she knew that she was going to utilize these short lessons to really focus on the meat and potatoes of the lesson. And the fluff, well, if they were still around for the fluff, they got the fluff. But she really honed in on these short lessons because children have short attention spans. And the more that you can teach them in a short period of time, the more that they're gonna retain. So these mini lessons, we're talking like 10, 15 minutes, elementary school years, 45 minutes at the high school level. Like these are not long, long lessons. These are short, little, like chicken nuggets instead of a chicken patty. We're talking just little tit, not even, like popcorn chicken. <laughs> They're tiny. They're just little bites. And there's not too much to, well, I learned about this, and I learned about this, and I learned about this, and I learned about that. It's bite size. So you really can ask the child through narration, here's another part of Charlotte Mason's method, have them narrate back to you. So what did we just learn about? What did you take away from this? And they can give you more details from a short little popcorn nugget size lesson than a whole like, I'm gonna say chicken patty. <laughs> they can give you what they learned, what they remember because they didn't have to try to remember every single little detail of an hour long lecture. It was 15 minutes and they're like, oh, you know what, this and this and this and this, and they're gonna remember that far better than an hour long lecture where there's so much information. They're just like, Poof. habit training, habit training, habit training. This is probably one of my favorite things about Charlotte Mason's method. I was going bananas with my children. Like, come on, clean this up, do this. Why can't you do this? Why, like, this is simple stuff. We do this every day, just do it. It was too much all at once. Charlotte Mason's method is to give your child like two or three habits to really focus on and master. And they can be simple, simple things. Brush your teeth in the morning at night. Blah, blah, blah. Brush your teeth in the morning and at night. Make your bed in the morning. And make sure your clothes go in the hamper. Boom, that's it. Those are the habits that you focus on and really make sure that they have a solid, repetitive behavior of doing this once they're able to do it without being asked or reminded over and over and over again, awesome. Add another habit. 
maybe now you're going to make sure that when you're done eating, you put your dishes into the sink. And it just grows and it builds. And I'm a type A personality, we know this. So I like to make a list of all of the habits that I would like my children to accomplish by the end of the year. And can check them off as they go because it just gives me this visual of like, whoa, yes, we're making it, we're, we're accomplishing things. Because after a while, once your children are just doing it repetitively without even you saying like, brush your teeth, make your bed, then you kind of forget that you worked with them on that. And you, you mama, like you made it possible for them to just be in the routine of doing that. So just like the small lessons, small little snippets of habits at a time. Once they're mastered, add another one. You might have to go back and revisit and like fine tune some, but this is one of my favorite things about Charlotte Mason's method. Another part of what I really love is her dictation. A quote, a saying, a Bible passage, something. Take it and dissect it. And you can do this once a day, once, you can use one for the whole week. I, I use one for the whole week. Just take something meaningful and impactful on your child's life and you read it to them and you discuss it and then you have them copy it down. Copy work, right? And then the next day you read it to them, you discuss it, you have them copy it down. Eventually they're going to read it to you and they're going to explain it to you. And all of those words that they're copying down, they're going to be able to spell them. It works on reading, handwriting, comprehension skills, and um, memorization all at the same time. I love the dictation and it doesn't have to be a long lengthy poem. It doesn't have to be anything huge. Just tiny quotes with big meanings and your children are going to learn how to read them. They're going to learn how to spell. They're going to learn enunciation and um, punctuation. They're going to learn about the person who said the important thing. So there's history or wherever you pick it from. Dictation is actually a lot of fun. I know a lot of people really don't like it, but I enjoy it and I like seeing my children their handwriting progress and their reading progress and we get some really interesting conversations out of the things that I pick so that's a dictation in our house is like nerdishly awesome art and music Charlotte Mason knew that art and music were therapeutic and they were essential to developing children. They were, oh gosh, looking at a painting is a whole lot different than seeing a painting. And I love it when we can just pick one painting a month and learn about the painter and learn about the style and learn about the history and learn about what exactly the artist was trying to get across and you'll be surprised how it opens up your child's mind even my four-year-old my four-year-old is so into this and she just like she puts herself in these paintings and then she acts them out throughout the month um, and she'll just be walking around like very whimsical I'm like, hey, Jocelyn, what are you doing? She's like, I'm walking through the valley. And now I'm gonna go up the mountain. I mean, she's got like this artistic sort of like whimsical hippie kind of brain that I just don't have. I'm more structured and rigid, but it's super cool to see her just like, she's got it in her mind, in her imagination. And she sees the painting in her head. It's amazing. 
and learning about composure. Com this is a word that I struggle with. Composers. Composers. Composer study is huge in Charlotte Mason. Now, this isn't something that we really love, but I will use one composer a month and we'll like use Pandora and we'll talk about the style of music and what was going on during that time and how the music influenced the people and how does this music make you feel? That's about as far as I go into it because it's just not my favorites, but I'm gonna be honest. Handicrafts. Charlotte Mason knew that children needed to keep their hands busy. They gotta be busy. So to take something like a spool of a spool of yarn, a, a skein of yarn, a bunch of yarn, <laughs> to take some yarn and turn it into a blanket, this is focusing on like progression and not giving up and perseverance and really just fine motor skills. Fine motor skills. Now, handicrafts don't have to be crocheting or knitting or needlework, but that's what it was during that time. Handicrafts can be simple. They can be just stringing beads on a string and making jewelry, making necklaces and bracelets, and it can be sewing. It can be um, as simple as cutting out snowflakes. These are handicrafts. Anything that keeps your children's hands busy and works on fine motor skills and gives them a sense of accomplishment at the end, those are handicrafts. Now I know, my boys, not so into the whole crafting thing. So instead of really sitting down at the table and doing handicrafts with them, they go outside. They do things like man things. Now I might get some nasty comments about this in the comment section. You know what? I'm just saying. For my girls, my girls like to do beady things, stereotypical. I know I'm being stereotypical right now, but you know, that's just, that's just what I'm doing. So if you've got nasty comments about sexism and man things, I understand that women can do these things too. And I'm not stopping my girls from doing them. And I'm not stopping my boys from playing with beads. If they want to do it, they could do it. My boys are not interested and my girls are not interested in going out and cutting limbs off of trees and cutting the grass and the, so handicrafts whittling sticks. My boys love to sit and whittle with sticks and they love to just go out and be in the woods and cut paths. Anything that gets them up, gets them moving and gives them a sense of accomplishment at the end, that's huge for boys. My boys cannot just sit down at the table and crochet or string beads. They gotta be more active than that. They will occasionally sit down and cut snowflakes or um, paper heart chains or something like that, but they're really, really interested in going out. That is still a handicraft. It doesn't have to be a very small, intricate thing like crocheting or knitting. Oh gosh, my coffee is empty. You know, my, my brain is starting to melt a little bit. Handicrafts, Charlotte Mason knew that these were huge, especially if you can throw in some quiet handicrafts while you're doing a read aloud. That just gives your children something to do while they're listening. My boys, I'll give them like fidget spinners or something quiet that they can Avoid Legos during read aloud time. Just don't do it. Just don't. It sounds like a good idea, but it's not. It's loud, it's obnoxious. I'm just looking for this one piece. And you're like, mm, what was I thinking? Avoid the Legos. Quiet toys. 
squishy like stress balls and stuff like that. All right, guys, that is it for me today. But if you have more questions about the Charlotte Mason method, leave them in the comments down below. And if you have suggestions on handicrafts or living books that you love, leave them in the comment section down below because I'm always, always, always nerdishly interested in learning more about things that I can implement into my homeschool, especially when it comes to living books. I love living books. We just, oh gosh, I'm not going to get into it because I could ramble on forever about living books. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you know somebody that could benefit from this video, go ahead and share it. Um, also check the description box down below for my book and my website. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.